some breaking news here. Midday on the Heat Report, I am Nick Roloff. Bam at a bio got an extension. Not surprising, but also surprising at the same time. Sham Sharanya had the initial note breaking the news on Wednesday afternoon, saying that the Heat and Bam Adebayo, a three-time All-Star and three-time All-Defensive player, intend to reach a three-year, $166 million maximum contract extension. He'd expect to lock in their cornerstone center through the 28-29 season. And this has me pretty fired up. I'm not going to lie. And my first reaction was I was just absolutely through the moon, if I'm going to be honest. Like, yes, Bam is getting an average of 55 Point three million dollars a season over that three-year extension he got. Um, but as you, Shams mentioned, he's going to be on this team through the 28-29 season, and it could have been a lot more damage to the Miami Heat payroll if he made an All-NBA team this past year. I thought Bam deserved to be at least on third-team All-NBA. If that was the case, he would have been eligible to sign a four-year, two hundred and ten-plus million dollar extension with Miami but only eligible to sign three for 166 as his max, I thought Bam might have taken the risk and bet on himself and waited another year to sign an extension to see if he can qualify for All-NBA or win Defensive Player of the Year so he can get more money the following season. But evidently he does not, and he signs that three for 166, which fires me up because I'm happy Bam's here. This is our captain. He's going to be the cornerstone of our franchise for the next hopefully 10, like eight years. I don't know when, whenever Bam can stop playing basketball, like that's when his reign is cornerstone of the Miami Heat ends. I want him to be a D Wade type player. Don't make the same mistake you made with Wade where he left for a couple of seasons and then came back. Keep Bam here the entire time. I'd say Bam at a bio is the second best pick in Miami Heat history already. The only person to bet of him, D Wade. Grade the BAM extension, though. A, B, C, D, or F. I'm giving it an A. Let me know your thoughts down below. Like I said, this could have been a lot more, and I'm happy that we locked up the best defensive player in the NBA for three extra seasons at a pretty solid cost. And I mentioned the solid cost, and I saw this little breakdown of it all, so excuse me looking down here, but the extension is running through the 26-27 season to the 28-29 season. In 26-27, he's getting paid $51.1 million. That accounts for 30% of the cap for the Heat. The year two is $55.2 million, which accounts for 29.5% of the cap. And then the final year, 28-29, is $59.3 million, which accounts for 28.8% of the cap. So it goes up by $4 million each of the three seasons, and the last year is 59. So it doesn't it averages out to $55.3 million a year, but it's not actually that on an annual average basis. And the cap percentage goes down every single year, obviously expecting that Miami is going to, or the NBA cap is going to continue to go up. And to me, this is just a terrific move. Like, Bam has improved every single year of his career, taking on more and more responsibility for Miami. And that's why he's trusted to be our franchise guy. He's pretty reliable in terms of games played like in 21 22 that freaking cursed year if you will like or not cursed year i think in 20 2021 but like he's just been solid like he's been there all the time and sure there's a want for him to improve his scoring as he's never really been more than a 21 point per game guy but he averaged basically 20 and 10 this past year on plus 50 percent efficiency and that's becoming more and more impressive is that a bio isn't really the center that like most centers are, right? Like obviously Jokic and B, like Cat, those type of guys, like they create offense for themselves, but so does Bam. Like Bam does not get the usage that you'd expect in the pick and roll. Like there's no really good guard that lobs it up to Bam. Yes, there's Bam slams and we get excited for that, but the most of Bam's offense comes from him getting the ball at the elbow and him driving by himself in an isolation setting or getting to the mid-range for a jumper. And speaking of his jump shot, like he showcased his ability to shoot a little bit of a three ball at the end of this past season. He shot 34% from three, super low volume, which is fine. But if he continues to impress and progress throughout the offseason on that three-point shot, then he has the potential to become 
the one of the best centers in the NBA. He already is. Like I think he's the third best center in the NBA behind Jokic and Embiid. That's just me personally. Maybe it's biased. Maybe it's not. But he has the ability to reach another tier if he's able to shoot the three ball at an efficient rate, as well as giving you the defense playmaking that he already does. Could there be another move coming, though? That's what I want to transition this conversation into. But make sure you are subscribed because we cover all Heat news, and we tell you if breaking news drops, we will have you covered. Make sure you are subscribed because, well, we are just a few hours away from the NBA draft, and when the Heat make a pick or make a trade or whatever they do tonight, we'll have another video covering it all. So hit that sub button. All right, I do want to transition this conversation because we know how good Bam is. We know how big this extension is for the Miami Heat. But now it's time to talk about what comes next. And we have been very open on the channel about how I believe the Heat need to make a move to help Bam and Jimmy continue to have a winning team around them. And we had a little bit of a report earlier today in between the first video we put out this morning and this video here that Jimmy Butler has told teams that are trying to contact him and sway him to request a trade from Miami that he's not interested and he wants to stay with the Heat. So it feels like unless Pat Riley and the Heat front office initiate trading Jimmy Butler, 22 is going to be here. You just locked up, bam. So you're committing, or it seems like you're committed, to these two players leading your franchise over the next two to three seasons, which is a good thing. You should not be upset about that. You should be upset if Pat Riley and this front office fails to make another move to help build a team around those two. Last night, Mikael Bridges gets dealt to New York. They just now got an unbelievable team of Randall, Brunson, DiVincenzo, Hart, Bridges. If they re-sign OG and OB, like they are dangerous. They have a lot of guard and wing depth. Boston, obviously, coming off a championship. Like You need to get more pieces around those two. I like Terry. I like Tyler. I like Jaime. I like Jovic. But you need more talent. And could that be Bam Adebayo's best friend, Donovan Mitchell? All signs point to d signing a long-term deal with the Cleveland Cavaliers, at least that's what's being reported. There's a lot of people saying that the interest is there from D. Mitch. The Cavs have an offer out on the table, which is the 4 for 208 max that D. Mitch can sign. My only question is, why hasn't he signed it yet? And if he hasn't done it yet, and they already hired their head coach, and Kenny Atkinson, are they not really going to get that extension? Bam has a chance. Him and D. Mitch are really good friends. They're borderline best friends. Like, the trio of friends in the NBA is Bam, Tatum, and D. Mitch. Like, obviously Tatum's not coming over to the town, but could you get D. Mitch? Like, and here's a hot take. Could the Mikael Bridges trade to the New York Knicks actually help the Heat land Donovan Mitchell? I have a theory on that in a second, but what should the Heat do next? Let me know down below. All right, the theory that I have here, and I actually thought about this, and I premeditated this take, and I was going to talk about it eventually. I got producer Coop laughing in my ear. Mitchell was going to sign an extension with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Sees Mikael Bridges go to New York. Sees the best friends of Villanova hanging out, playing basketball together. Well, D-Mitch is sitting here like, well, damn, I want to play with my best friend. That's Bam Adebayo. Maybe I want to go to Miami now. And also... With the Knicks getting that good roster of wing defenders in depth, I don't think Cleveland can build a team to beat that. But you know what? Maybe Jimmy and Bam and myself can take down the New York Knicks and the Boston Celtics. I don't know. I'm speculating here. But I do legitimately think that the Mikael Bridges trade to New York helped Miami in their attempt to get down Mitchell. Now it's mute if he signs an extension. But I do legitimately believe that there's a better chance of him not signing an extension now after seeing other teams collect friends and good morale and vibes together and create more talent. That like Mitchell's like, well, I'm not really boys like that with Darius Garland. We don't fit that well together. Who am I? Am I best friends with Evan Mobley and Jared Allen? No, I'm best friends with Bam, and he would be the best player that I could possibly play with because, face it, Bam might – fucking be better excuse my language than Jimmy Butler at this point if I'm gonna be honest here so I don't know we'll see what happens all I know is that this man's got to make a move for the Miami Heat to improve this roster 
And you're going to want to be subscribed here at the Heat Report because we're going to make sure you're covered on everything Miami does this offseason, whether it be draft, trade, free agency. There's also a report out there that the Heat are negotiating with Haywood Highsmith right now. Anthony Chang had that report of the Miami Herald. There's a lot of stuff coming around Miami. Uh, can't cover it all, but we're going to try to do it all. So make sure you hit that sub button. I'm Nick Roloff. I'll see you with another video tonight. And we're going to be live for the NBA draft as well. So sub and join us tonight. Thank you.